guys, there's a bunch of trout right down here. Right there in front of us. A whole school of trout swimming around. Bobber's down! Bobber's down! Fish on, baby! Fish on! Oh, bear! 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 You guys, welcome back to another episode. I am out in the ultra remote wilderness heading up to a small alpine lake that based on my research could be absolutely filled with beautiful trout. This whole area is filled with small uh, mountain streams. I don't have any water uh, with me. I did bring a military MRE uh, for food in case we don't catch anything. But uh, in terms of water, we should be all set. That is one of the benefits of the Northwest up here is that we have uh, almost limitless supplies of clean freshwater creeks. Look at this tree right here. Just like so many of the forests here, these, uh, woods burned down probably 15 to 20 years ago a massive fire came through here i just think it's one of the most beautiful things to see is how an old burnt forest comes back to life uh, with these guys right here these are some healthy looking trees gonna pull out uh, the MRE to get a little snack and then I heard something right there in front of us and there was two squirrels just chasing each other oh there they are there they are oh, oh man those two are just having a great day out there but that does uh, just make me want to mention something that whenever you guys are out in the backcountry uh, it is a good idea to have some kind of protection for yourself uh, out here. I do have strapped to the front of my backpack a uh, can of bear mace right here. Uh, we're really far north here, close to the Canadian border, so there could be grizzly bears out here. I know there's black bears. I know there's mountain lions. I know there's wolves. Now, other emergency stuff that I always carry with me uh, is a pistol. I've got um, a first aid kit. I've got a tourniquet. Uh, with me at all times to stop bleeding in case something really bad happens. Of course, we've got our water uh, filter 
And then a couple of years ago, I bought one of these satellite phones uh, just because out here in the remote mountains, uh, there's no reception for miles and miles. Even the road in here, there's no way that your phones will work out in these areas. Now, having all of the emergency gear in the world won't do you any good up here in the mountains if you don't practice with it regularly. Why don't we do a quick drill with the bear mace? We're gonna do like a quick draw and this rock right here can be our volunteer. That'll be our bear that's gonna sneak up on us. All right. So we're just gonna put our full gear on here and uh, just simulate that we're walking uh, down the trail. Now the way that this bear mace here works is it has a safety up here that you gotta click off and now it's ready to spray. Uh, so it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, again, muscle memory, we just gotta make sure that we practice this every once in a while so that uh, when it really counts, we know exactly what to do. Whew, we got that quick draw on that bear or the mountain line. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, boys and girls, here we go. Bear drill. Whoa, 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 bear, 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 bear. Hey, hey, bear, bear, bear. Whew. Ooh, man, not a whole lot of spray in this can. Now I've used it once before for maybe a couple of seconds, but I would say there's probably no more than uh, maybe six seconds six or eight seconds of spraying this can this baby is lightweight just a little tiny bit in there we're going to save that oh. <laughs> man it smells like a a mix between really spicy food and like like gross perfume or something <laughs> now distance wise it barely reached that rock and i fired from the trail uh right here to the rock there i would say that is maybe man that's 15 feet if we're pushing it so just know that that bear mace it's not going to go very far and there's barely any wind if you were spraying against the wind well first off you're going to be in a lot of trouble no matter what the bear decides to do with you against the wind you might get six or eight feet of spray if you're lucky and uh with the wind maybe up to 20 feet or so all right let's go ahead and take a look at that mre and uh just get a little bit of uh, food into us uh, for the rest of the hike. We are starting to get close to the lake. There we go. A U.S. military MRE menu number three, chicken, egg noodles, and vegetables in sauce. <laughs> I don't know what the sauce is going to be, but I'm really excited. Ah, 2017 vintage, six years old. Ooh, there's the uh, chicken and noodles right here. Mixed fruit it's like a i don't know what that is it's like applesauce but mixed fruit sauce that's kind of exciting right there we've got our heater pouch we're not even going to bother with this heater pouch here uh these things have never worked for me in these old mres for some reason it seems like they must have gone bad uh over the years there's our main course right there the chicken noodle i can feel either a piece of chicken or a noodle in there We've got our accessory packet right here. It's got toilet paper, some matches, uh, coffee, some gum, all kinds of goodies in there. Ooh, peanut butter, now we're talking. And strawberry jam, peanut butter and strawberry jam. That's, that is what's up. Beverage base powder, orange. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Orange flavored, no fruit juice. <laughs> they're, not, they're not lying about it at all. They're just very honest. We've got our beverage bag that's to mix up our, our no fruit juice. We got us a spoon, a pack of Skittles. And then we have a cracker. Look at that, it's nice. This here is gonna go really good with our peanut butter and the jam. Oh, and some coffee. Except I skipped all the creeks already and I don't think there's any more creeks coming so we're gonna have to get to the lake and uh, make coffee there. So we're gonna save that cracker and the jam and peanut butter. All right, we're gonna save uh, most of that MRE uh, for when we get over to the lake, but let's go ahead and dip into this mixed fruit right there. 110 calories, mostly carbohydrates. This thing here is just to get you uh, fired up, give you some energy. Ooh. Oh, oh man, it's just running out. Oh, it's like, no, it's not, it's not like an apple sauce. It's actual, this stuff is like, like a fruit cocktail or something. These are real pieces of fruit right here. This is exciting. Mmm. 
I can taste a pear, some peach. It even looks like there's whole grapes inside here. Oh man, it might not be as fresh as the day it got picked off the tree, but right now this is really nice, especially since I'm kind of thirsty too. The liquid in here is fantastic. Now, of course, any little wrappers and stuff that we have, just have a little spot in your bag, like an outer pocket where you can throw those guys there. That way we're not leaving anything out here. Guys, I think we're getting really close to the lake. Oh my goodness, look at this place. Sure. There's a whole school of trout. There's a whole school of them swimming right down there by the shore. Do you guys see them right there? The ripples in the water. See that right there next to the shoreline? Those are trout swimming around there. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> guys, there, there's at least 10 trout right here next to the shoreline. right there, maybe one foot from shore. Now you can see this mountain right here is about to cover uh, the sun. It's already getting later in the day. We've still got plenty of daylight left, but uh, this might be the last that we're gonna see from the sun when she hides behind that mountain there. All right, guys, so here is what's happening. These trout uh, are a bunch of brook trout, and what they're doing is they are in the middle of spawning. I have never seen brook trout spawn before. What they do is they come from the deep and come into the shallows to make what they call reds, which are little sandy, gravelly areas that they dig out with their fins. And then the females and the males find each other and they mate and lay their eggs in those spots. Uh, they are invasive in this area. There's no size limit, no uh, limit as to how many we could catch. So we could absolutely catch those guys right there. But since they are in the middle of spawning, uh, we're not gonna go for those guys. We're gonna let them do their thing and we're gonna try and see if we can pull a big one out from the deep. All right, what we're gonna do is set up uh, one of these rods for a bullet lure. I brought a, made a couple of fresh ones and uh, brought them out. So we'll see if we can catch some trout on the bullet lure up here at this lake. And then I think what we're gonna do with uh, the second rod is just set it up for a bobber. The water in these lakes up here is super, super clear. So we gotta make sure to use the thinnest line possible and fluoro helps make the line invisible. It's just crazy with the fish just swimming. I'm watching them swimming around right next to me. They're jumping. Oh man, I cannot wait to get started. The bite could be completely off and we might just not catch a single thing, but I'd say we have a pretty good chance of catching a trout. Now this here is a slip float, but what we have right here is our little bobber stopper and these uh, little tag ends there. They're made of nylon and so that they don't fray. What you can just do is use a lighter and just kind of melt Melt the end there and it beads up like that There we go, it's nice and cleaned up and that way it doesn't fray on you There we go. I've already got a pre-tied uh, leader from one of the last episodes. I just like to use these little hook baggies to store your leaders Here we go. Oh, 
That is some cold, refreshing mountain water. All right, here's our military beverage base powder and uh, our beverage bag. I'm pretty thirsty, so we're gonna make a nice, large beverage. Natural and artificial flavor. Wait a second, but it says there's no fruit juice in here, so it's all artificial. <laughs> Interesting color. It's like a salmon color. Oh man, I hope that wasn't too much. It's probably about half of the bag that I just poured in there. Man, what would you say? Is that orange or is that salmon? Orange or salmon? Let me know in the comments what you guys think this color here is. I call it very suspect. Let's see what this stuff is made of here. Not bad, not bad. It's kind of like a, kind of a bitter Gatorade. <laughs> it's like it's like Gatorade, but not as good. <laughs> Maybe it's just because it's getting old that it's developing like a weird bitter flavor. It's slowly deteriorating. Still refreshing. All right, we're just gonna start off with uh, the bullet lure right here. We're gonna just ignore all of the spawning fish right in front of us, and we're gonna try and cast out further. Oh man, I'm seeing them uh, surface out there. So let's go ahead and just, let's give it a couple casts. All right, first cast with the bullet lure. We're gonna give these guys a nice fast retrieve. These are. These are wild mountain trout. All right, nothing on the first cast, that's okay. Oh, another one just surfaced right there, right there. Water is so clear. We could see, we could see any follows. Get that lure out of the water before we we get up close here. Ooh, man, nice casting distance. We got that baby way out there. Oh, oh, just had a bite. are some aggressive brook trout. All right, come on, baby. Let's get back out there again. Back out to that hungry fish. Maybe he'll bite again. Oh, oh one just surfaced right there. Right there. Positioned ourselves that we're going right over him right now. Oh, come on, baby, come on. Ooh, there's actually a couple of uh, spawning beds right there. Wow, look at that. You can see these round little spots where the trout have carved out a little sandy, <laughs> little sandy holes where they can lay their eggs. Man, it would be so easy to dip the lure right there. There's probably four or five trout in that one. And there's six or seven trout swimming around in that red right here. All right, we're gonna try and stay away from those nests right there and uh, just keep casting out far and hope that we can get one out there. There's gotta be one hungry trout out there just waiting for a bullet lure to come right by him. Man, cannot believe that we have not had a bite yet. 
that's just how that goes sometimes. There could be fish all over the place and they might just not bite. It could be that the spawning uh, itself is making the fish not want to bite. They're too busy uh, doing other things. They can't blame them. They're having the time of their life in there right now. Time for us to start a uh, cup of coffee. We're just gonna use our little solid fuel stove to make the coffee. This is a barbecue lighter right there and we're just gonna place it right inside the stove. Light that baby up. There we go. God, the water here is so clean, we don't need to filter it at all. Right, let's take a close look at this cracker. You can see these crackers here are very, very brittle. Mm. Quite flavorless and dry, if I'm honest. Ooh, runny peanut butter. Squeeze out every last bit of that peanut butter. We want to get all the calories that we can get up here. Calories mean energy. They mean warmth, they mean survival. I'm really curious what that strawberry jam looks like. That's the tiniest little hole. There we go, we need a bigger hole. We can't squeeze it all out of that. That little hole was just too tight. Ooh, chunky. Look at this, our coffee pot is burping. You see that burp right there? Ooh, that baby is boiling and ready to go. Just got a little bit of instant coffee right here. There we go. Don't need to be shy at all. A nice strong cup. There we go. I've got our MRE spoon right here that we can use to stir that a little bit. All right, this coffee is ready, but it is still very, very hot to the touch. So we're just gonna use the lake here actually to cool it down just a tad. You just kind of hold it in the water just for a second and that'll just take the edge off. Tell you what, we're just going to set it right there for one minute. Guys, I was getting the coffee and there's a little dragonfly larva down here. He got away though. He was right there by the rock. Oh, there he is, there he is. Got him. Got him. Look at that. These little guys here are probably the best trout bait in the world, in these mountain lakes here. Ooh, almost forgot the coffee, don't want that getting too cold. We're just gonna throw that little dragonfly larva on the hook, just like that, right there. All right, let's go ahead and cast this guy out there. There we go. All right, the bobber's right out there. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and enjoy our coffee and our crackers, but we got to keep an eye on that bobber there. Look at these beautiful, beautiful crackers there. Cheers, guys. Mm. That's got to be the most bland cracker in the world. <laughs> but with the peanut butter and the jam, it's actually really good. That's good peanut butter. I mean, they do hook you guys up in the military with that peanut butter. Mmm, what a mess. Peanut butter is stuck everywhere. Those military crackers are so dry that they just they, they just crumble. I mean, there's no structural element to those things at all. Oh, man. They're surfacing right there by the bobber. Oh, man, that was a delicious little snack. But I cannot believe that we have not caught any fish yet that bobber out there now we're you know doubling our chances having a second uh pull out there fishing so let's go ahead and send that bullet lure out there again we did get one strike uh earlier on the bullet lure but no one uh, has committed all the way yet bobber versus bullet lure 
who's gonna get the first trout? <laughs> Ooh, interesting, interesting. There's a trout. Okay, there's one right here. He's nowhere near any nests. He's kind of following. He's not super, super uh, interested in it. It's a beautiful little brookie. Let's see if we can get him to bite. Nah, not interested. Oh, man, I'm seeing more uh, trout just cruising there. There's definitely trout cruising. What I'm thinking might be the case, guys. Remember a couple of episodes ago uh, when we caught those brook trout on a fly and we used our spin rod. I think we might try that out. The bullet lure might just be a little bit too much uh, presentation for them this time around. And I'm seeing them within casting distance of a nice heavy fly so we can try and sight fish for those guys. Bullet lure, you've done good, but you didn't do it today. There we go. We're just gonna throw one of these Thin Mint flies on there and see if they wanna go after that. One surfaced right next to the bobber. Maybe the bobber's been down <laughs> this whole time. We don't even know. So our casting distance is definitely going to be uh, a lot shorter with this fly right here. But I think if we just get that baby out there. Oh yeah, that's enough to at least sight fish for those trout that are cruising around. Maybe we can do like a slow kind of jigging retrieve with it. Oh man, that slow sinking motion should be absolute fire. We're just gonna wait for a trout to kind of come by. Oh, where are they? Oh, I think I see some right over there. Oh, there's a fish. There's a fish, second cast with the fly. Could not resist that slowly sinking action. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, baby. Oh, he's beautiful. Beautiful, Brookie. Look at the colors of that fish right there. Unbelievable. His fins are absolutely beautiful. They're red with a black and white stripe in the front. He's got red spots, yellow spots. All right. Awesome. This little guy here, look at that hook pop right out of him, but uh, he's actually a good eater size. Why don't we keep like two smaller ones? We'll leave the big ones to breed. There we go. Just put that guy to sleep right away. No need for him to suffer. Brook trout are absolutely one of the most beautiful fish in the world. Oh, the bobber's down. Bobber's down. Fish on, baby. Fish on. Oh, oh, right as I'm showing that fish there in the net. We got another one. Got another one. Oh, he's a good fighter. Good fighter. Could not resist the dragonfly. Absolutely couldn't resist. How long have you been on there, buddy? How long have you been on there? Oh, that, that's not a brook trout. That's not a brook trout. What is this? What is this? No, it's another brook trout. <laughs> no, wait, is it a brook trout? I just want to make sure it's not a Dolly Varden. Uh, hmm. No, I'm pretty sure that's a female brook trout. Yeah, it's just a lighter colored uh, brook trout, but I'm not, ah, guys, I'm not actually 100% sure. We're going to keep this guy in the water here. If it's a Dolly Varden, uh, they are protected here and uh, we wouldn't be able to keep that but I'm pretty sure it's a brook trout. Oh man, that's a nice fish, guys. That's a nice fish, way more uh, subtle coloring. That's the only reason I'm thinking it might be a dolly. There we go, the hook is just barely, barely in that fish, popped right out. Didn't even need to handle uh, the fish, which is perfect, because uh, we are gonna release this guy here. I can't 100% say that this here is a brook trout. It might be a dolly varden. I don't think so, but let's just go ahead and let her go. She's also a nice big fish. Look at that. You have a wonderful rest of your day. Man, so bobber with dragonfly larva is fire as well. And man, those little thin mint flies right here are magical in these mountain lakes. Whew, look at that sun, I think is about to actually set. It's getting dark really fast. So let's maybe take this fly and uh, work the shoreline a little bit. I wanted to check out what's over that way uh, along the lake. There we go. I'm actually going to swap uh, that Thin Mint fly for another one that I uh, already debarbed um, just because we might release a few fish here 
And if we're going to release them, I don't want to be fishing with a barb. So we're just going to throw a barbless one on there. Man, I wish it weren't getting dark already or we could just continue adventuring out here. It's definitely getting cold. Let me tell you that. Ooh, this is a nice little, little spot right here. Oh, there's one right there, one right there. Just cruising, cruising in the middle of nowhere. Right there, right there. Oh, he's, he's going for it, going for it. Oh, Whew, my heart's pounding. My heart's pounding. That trout came to check it out, but last second uh, decided not to take it. Very interesting. I wonder what uh, made it make that decision. Ah, you know what? We're actually a little close to those nests right there. We're going to just continue on and find an area that doesn't have any of the trout nests. Look at this spot here. Oh, guys, just look at that sunset. We got this entire lake completely to ourselves, way out in the mountains. Man, my absolute favorite place. There's a tree in the water there that might provide a spot for trout to hide and ambush. So why don't we try a cast right there? No, 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 no. We're stuck on a branch. Of course, that risk comes with the territory. Oh, I see exactly where we're stuck. Whoa. Oh, no, going in. Oh. oh, guys, worst case scenario. Went in the water, our boots are wet. Oh, I slipped on that tree there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, guys, that is one of the last things that you want to have happen out in the mountains. Something like a wet boot like that can be really funny if it's uh, a hot summer day. But, uh, man, when it gets colder in the season like it is right now, at night when the sun is fully down, it's going to go below freezing. Uh, up here. Something like that can actually get very dangerous, especially if you're far out in the mountains. Even in the summertime, if your boots get soaked like that and you've got a lot of hiking ahead of you, it can completely ruin your feet. Uh, so man, that was a big uh, mistake. We got our fly back though. <laughs> we got our fly back. And luckily I always pack a second pair of wool socks with me. So uh, we'll at least have somewhat dry feet uh, for the way out. Oh man, my feet feel super heavy now with these waterlogged boots. Love to find some slightly deeper spots. Oh, one just surfaced right there. There we go, sinking, sinking. Oh no, stuck again. Are you kidding me? What are we stuck on this time? Oh man, that's way down there. All right, let's just hope for the best here. Oh, nope. Popped off. Dang. All right, I just brought all the gear uh, over here where we lost that fly. Oh, look, there's a like fire pit right here. Man, this is nice, guys. Maybe we should come back out here and like camp out here for a night. There's actually another lake even higher that we could uh, hike to after camping here. So let me know in the comments if we should do uh, something like that. That would be awesome. So maybe we can get another bite on the bobber. Let's go ahead and uh, just get that bobber out there. Of course, we're gonna have to find another dragonfly larva. This pile of sticks, there's gotta be one right here. Oh, oh, there's one right here, right here. Got him, got him. 
Look at him. <laughs> Man, they're beautiful. Just put them on the hook. There we go. Look at that. He wants to go trout fishing with us. All right, let's take a look at this uh, chicken, was it chicken noodle soup? What is this? Chicken egg noodles and vegetables. Oh, it just squirted on me a little bit. Ooh, that looks good. Look at that, man, you can tell, like there's some real noodles in there. This is, I thought it was gonna be soupier, but this is nice and hearty looking. We're just gonna pour that into our pot here because we're just gonna cook it over the fire. warms up we're just going to clean up our trout for that we're going to use the mini cleaver <laughs> all right mini cleaver time Ooh. real easy just one cut down there one cut behind the head and then you just grab the whole head look at the guts just come right out with the head. The only thing you'll have left is that dark line back there in the fish. And you can just take your knife, score that baby. And then just use your finger to push it all out. And that right there is a beautiful, beautiful clean trout. The meat is actually a little bit, uh, actually it's very, very orange. Man, I cannot wait to taste that. Thank you little buddy for providing a wonderful meal for us here. Man, guys, the sky is completely on fire right now. It, uh, the colors are just like pink and uh, like salmon color, kind of like that orange beverage that we have. It's just painting the entire landscape. Ooh, those noodles are ready to go. It is getting cold, guys. It's getting really cold, so a hot meal is gonna be uh, much appreciated. What we're just gonna do is get a little bit of butter into the uh, pan here to cook up that trout. Get that fish in there. Ooh, man, that fish was ready to go. Little, little big for the pan. We should have cut the tail off. All right, guys, the moment you've all been waiting for. I've got a little bit of Danish sea salt that we're going to throw onto that fish. Just look, look at this, look at this right there. Look at the size of those crystals. I'm just gonna take that and sprinkle it on generously. Ooh, man, that fish is curling in the pan so much because he's so fresh. Man, look at that chicken and egg noodles in there. That looks amazing and it is hot. Oh, that's good. That's really, really good. Oh, he's golden brown on the other side. Wow. Man, this has just been a crazy year, guys. Fell behind a little bit, gotta say, on uh, the YouTube videos, just buying the farm, bit off a way bigger piece uh, than I could swallow. So uh, I'm just slowly catching up to the whole thing. My goal really was uh, here for the channel to get to a million subscribers by December 31st, by the end of the year. But uh, man, it's gonna be a tough challenge. But you know what? If you don't try, you'll never make it, so million subscribers baby let's give it our best shot of course subscribe if you guys are still brand new that way you guys can join the family oh man look at this trout right here he's perfect what we can do is we'll pull him out and then we'll just pull the meat oh <laughs> look at it just fall right off the bones that is perfect that's always how you know when a trout is done mm. let's take a look at our trout here Look at that trout, beautifully crunchy, crispy brown skin. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh, 
very unique flavor. The meat is very firm on this fish right here. And I would say it has like almost a little bit of like a woody, a woody flavor. That's very interesting. I've never had that. I think we got a bit of a tail fin right here. Mm, nice and crispy. Oh, delicious. Man, I really would have enjoyed catching a second trout. But that one will do. beautiful place up here all right guys I'm all packed up and uh, need to make it back down uh, to the truck it is completely pitch black uh, now but man it is a beautiful beautiful night so of course feel free to subscribe and uh, drop a like on this video here it helps a ton uh, and uh, drop a comment I'll see you guys down in the comment section I gotta stop on the trail so I don't like face plant and man, love you guys. We'll see you all for the next one. Until then, you all know it. Fish on, baby. Oh, man. Whew. Just look at that sunset over there. That's something else, huh?